Hey, how's it going guys? Today we are going to be taking a look at my Proxmox backup setup. Now I'm not going to be able to go into like excessive detail just because of the nature of backups. They need to be redundant and secure. Um, but I think I could provide some value to you if I can show you my Proxmox backup setup. First, I'm going to start with the storage. Basically, um, in my current setup here, I have a Proxmox cluster of a couple servers that are here on site and those all mount to a NFS server that I have locally here with this IP address. Obviously it's going to be blurred out, um, but these all mount to that NFS server and on that I allow everything. Um, theoretically I could boot VMs off of it. Uh, I don't plan to um, because I have my Ceph cluster for that, um, but I could theoretically boot VMs off of it as well. Um, and that is currently where I'm storing all of my backups. Uh, under backup retention, I am keeping the last 10 backups. Um, and this is a global thing. I don't want more than 10 backups um, of anything at any point in time just because um, I don't want my backup folder to be too large. And you'll see why later on because I am going to show you my Azure backup setup that backs up to Azure Blob Archive Storage. It's kind of cool. So. Um, that is the configuration of the NFS storage here on Proxmox. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start to have to blur out a few things here um, a lot more than before. Basically, this is the backup job that will run um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 a.m. This is using the storage of um, the storage that I showed you before. This is on all nodes or hosts, and this is only backing up VMs in the pool that is BN or Beam Networks. It's only backing up those VMs because anything else that I host, I have them in separate pools and I can fine tune the backup frequency for that. A lot of the things that's not in my production environment has no need at all to be backed up um, more than like every few weeks or whatever. So um, that's all completely separate. And I get an email from Proxmox on failure only, which means that um, if it runs at 4 a.m. and everything succeeds, which it does almost every single time, then it will run silently. I don't hear about it, which is nice. It still logs it so I can log in and check my backups. Um, but I am assured um, that I will get an email on failure of a backup. Now this could be failure because storage is not mounted or because a VM just failed the backup for whatever reason. Um, I've only ever had it where the storage isn't mounted um, and I just have to restart my NFS server, but it's really good to know that I will get an email. And uh, compression, I'm using ZSTD. Uh, I found that this is fine. I've had no issues with it and it works fine. It's really nice to transfer VMs between sites because the files are so small. Um, the mode is snapshot. Now I could suspend or stop the VM. I found that snapshot for what I'm doing is perfectly fine. I'm not doing anything super intense with my VMs. So snapshotting them live is great because I have very minimal downtime and it gets the job done with the backups. So if I go to retention here, I'm keeping the last four backups for everything in my production environment. Um, this is probably not the best idea to be honest, because if I need to go back farther um, for whatever reason, I won't have that. But it's better than nothing and at this point I'm still in the like trial and um, testing phase of the backups so it's not the hugest deal if I were to lose a VM or two um, due to failure of backups. So that is the backup job here on Proxmox. Um, if you want to create one you could totally do that as well. So at this point this is everything I need to do in Proxmox. This is all I need to show you. I'm going to connect to my server and pull up the NFS configuration because I think that's kind of cool as well. Um, but then we'll go from there with the syncing to Azure and all of that stuff later on in this video. Okay, so this is currently under the dash etc dash exports um, in Ubuntu. Uh, I installed the NFS kernel server and that is where all of this configuration is um, being pulled and being ran on the server itself. Um, so the directory is mount md0 backups proxmox. This is purely my proxmox um, things. So it's just saying anything on my slash 24 network, which I know is completely insecure. I'm working on it. By the time you see this video, <laughs> that will be fixed. Um, but as of now, I'm saying anything on my slash 24 is able to read, write, sync, blah, 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 and do all of that just fine. These permissions work out great. So this is saying, so if you wanted to switch this, you could, um, and you could say that if you only wanted a certain client to be able to access this, you could do a slash 32, um, et cetera. Uh, and just so you know, when you mount this in um, Proxmox, this will also be your um, backup like path. So whatever this is, is what will match on the live configuration. 
um, but this is also the internal path on the server. So it's not like um, SMB or Samba where you mount an external and an internal path and you can kind of map them separately. That way people don't have to see your internal path to the data on your server, if that makes sense. So that is that. Um, now I'm going to show you kind of my Azure setup. It's also going to have to be blurred out like quite a bit. Um, I apologize, but I'm going to pull that up here and just show you kind of my storage account configuration. Um, I know it's not too helpful to show that, but I think it could help explain a little bit um, once we get into the backup scripts and all of that. So under Azure, I have a storage account and it is um, where everything lives. So I have my settings set to soft delete for four days um, for blobs and containers set to seven. I'm only using blobs. Um, that is all I'm using. So if I go down here to containers, uh, I have containers then for all of my different backup types. Um, I actually only have two as of recording this video, but I'm going to add more. So under my backup container, this is where all of my files live. Um, and I use the archive tier for every single thing I do on Azure because um, chances are with my data, I'm keeping it way longer than 180 days anyway, um, which is the minimum for the um, no early deletion fee kind of thing with the archive storage. The archive storage is also super cheap. Let me pull it up. So as you can see, the archive storage is just absolutely so cheap for your first 50 terabytes um, and for any data you ever have, essentially. So if we calculate this, so this is per gigabyte. So if I say 1024, um, you're at just about a dollar per terabyte per month, um, which is just absolutely insane. It's insanely cheap. So one thing to consider, though, is that um, when you upload to Azure Archive Storage, you are not uploading straight to the archive storage. It has to sit in cool storage for a little bit um, before it then gets offloaded to archive. I don't know if they use like LTO tape drives or whatever, but they have to cache it for a little bit um, and they have to chunk it up as well. So archive storage, you have to have four gigabyte blocks of data. So anything um, that is larger than four gigabytes needs to get chunked up and that takes cool storage to kind of facilitate that um, chunking of the data. So I actually noticed that during backups, if I go to my cost here, I'm just going to blur this whole screen out for a second, I apologize. Um, if I go to my cost here and I go to my cost analysis, my cost this month is actually $6 and it's forecasted to be up to 17 bucks. And I've only uploaded a couple terabytes. And this is because if I scroll down here, um, over on the left side, you can see my blob storage for cool local redundant storage in US East is about five bucks. And that is just the data that is sitting in the cool storage for a little bit until it gets offloaded to archive storage. So my archive storage is just 91 cents because that's on the actual data that's being stored for long term. So there's no like persistent cool storage um, cost. It is pretty much just the archive storage that will last. If I was not going to upload any more data for the rest of this month, I would um, in the my bill next month would just have the archive storage from what I understand. So that's a little odd, but it's something you just need to consider. Now, no matter what platform you use to um, store your data, there's going to be ingress and egress fees. Um, most likely. So I would just consider this kind of an ingress fee because that's what I'm uploading into Azure. So in this container, um, I just wanted to show you real quick, if I go to backups, proxmox, it actually, I actually chunk it into little dates on my folders here. So I don't back up very frequently and I don't have it automated yet. I will get to that, I promise. But for now, I just have folders and these are essentially just entire snapshots of my proxmox backup folder. And this is done good enough for now. And I just, I like the dates as well because then I know when the 180 day period is up and I'm able to delete the data um, if I want to. But if I want to leave it, then obviously I can leave the data there. But you need to consider that there's early deletion fees if you're wanting to delete your data before 180 days. Okay, so this is actually the command that I'm running to run my backups manually. Um, I need to automate this and <laughs> Uh, do a few adjustments, but this is this is good enough for now for me to demonstrate for the purposes of this video. Really quick, I did want to mention you have to have this Azure access tier equals archive option or flag in the command because that is the only way that you can get the storage to go directly to archive storage. Um, you'll still have to do the cool um, sort of caching, but this will offload it to archive as soon as possible. So you want to add this into your command. That way you can take advantage of the Azure archive storage for the super cheap price. So I'm actually using something called the R clone. I found that R clone works a lot better than Azure's CLI commands because R clone um, like authenticates and stays authenticated. With Azure's CLI, I found that I had to re-authenticate every single command I ran. 
but with our clone i can just stay logged in it's kind of nice so this is our clone i'm using the fast sync um, which is just it reduces cost in azure i believe because you don't have to continuously select um, and preview the data that's in azure um, that's reducing your read operations um, ignore existing is just saying that if the file is already there it's going to ignore it um, that's not a huge issue for proxmox because i'm not really like adding on to the data i'm creating new folders um, but I do have some data that like I want to keep syncing between my server and Azure and just uploading that same data from the same folder and keeping them consistent. So that is nice that it doesn't replace the files. Here, excluding, I'm just anything that starts with a dot. I actually need to remove that um, underscore, but my purpose was for this was anything that's a hidden file or in progress of being copied over is going to be excluded because it's going to keep changing anyway therefore making it not back up correctly uh, next we have the um, source path which is just mount md0 backups proxmox and this is backing up to my azure storage right here and colon uh, and then the and then the container name inside of azure and then the path inside of that container so it's not too complicated I, our clone makes it a lot easier than Azure CLI, um, but this is kind of how you can do that. So essentially in this video, we've covered that you can have an automated backup task in Proxmox, sync your data to an NFS share, and that NFS share can then be backed up through this our clone command. And you can even run this in a cron job if you want to completely automate your Proxmox backups. So they can back up locally, then you can sync them offsite and you can cover yourself with the 321 backup principle. Having three copies of your data, um, in two different storage mediums, and one of them being off-site. So that is all for this video. I appreciate you watching this. If you found value out of this, let me know. Um, please consider subscribing. If you have anything to add, um, please leave a comment down below. I'm open to suggestions, um, but that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.